Hello everyone and welcome back to Raise Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2 where I continue my construction of the International Space Station with STS-112 which will bring the S-1 truss to the station. Now the S-1 truss would have radiators on it but we don't have the radiator parts right now and that's a shame. They could have given it to us without having the heating system active, we could just have them but we do not have them so I can't put good radiators on. I thought about putting solar rays on in place of radiators, specifically these, which would sort of look the part uh, if we could like recolor the solar panels to be white or something, uh, but they're not big enough. They don't really fit the part. They, they sort of look, you know, they have that little crinkle of the radiator panels working for them. Uh, but yeah, I tried to see the look of it on here and it just wouldn't fit. Uh, it doesn't suit. So what I've done is put a small docking port here, a Clampatron Jr. And when we get radiator panels, if we ever get to that, uh, we can dock them to this truss as necessary. So that will be the plan and that's the best I can do for now. Uh, somebody mentioned using structural panels. We can't really fit structural panels in here. Obviously they would have to remain extended <laughs> uh, and they wouldn't fit in the shuttle bay if they look at all proper uh, because we can't retract them we don't have hinges or any sort of robotics so I can't use structural panels either so I'm in the bind as far as I can tell uh, I don't think there's any other good solution so we're going to bring it out like this I wanted to uh, highlight uh, it in the VAB specifically to sort of demonstrate VAB lag though I mean it's not impossible but it is a bit frustrating at this point so anyway, just a side note on that and a warning uh, for those who might try to attempt to duplicate this right now. Uh, look at the cargo bay closing. Uh, anyway, so that is a struggle and all the missions are going to take longer and longer because of the lag. That's inevitable. But for now, we're going to try this and with STS-112. Okay, we appear ready to launch. And skipping countdown. And we have ignition and launch. Somebody wanted me to uh, ignite the boosters after the... I mean, uh, release the clamps after the boosters ignite because of the dip that we have. But I think they should correct that about the boosters. The boosters should not take time to ignite. I mean, I'm sure they really do, but it's really, really fast. So, just making that point, they should be up to full throttle much quicker than that. Okay, trying to keep it... Uh, on the right heading here, always a bit of a struggle. The vector doesn't really want to come along with us perfectly for a while. Really, now my main concern is trying to get the shuttle back in one piece. It's been rough. I forgot to put the drag chute. I uh, had been meaning to put the drag chute after our recent problems with the landings on the off chance that it might work. Somebody had suggested it. So you can tell by the clock right now as the boosters separate here, uh, the lag that we have. You can see one in sim second is many in real time seconds. And of course that was a familiar thing in KSP1 but not with the hardware we have now. Of course now uh, this hardware which I'll remind people is an i5 12600K RTX 2070 and 64GB of RAM can certainly run KSP1 just fine unless I have a 1000 part vessel or something like that. With the lag the launch is taking a lot longer. I do notice that it goes faster once we get into orbit at least until we get to the station. It perplexes me that we have lag in the VAB though. It's like atmospheric lag is applied in the VAB as well. I don't know. I think the booster separating helped a bit. So there's that. And shut down. Alright, that will be a good external tank disposal orbit. So yeah, somebody had pointed it out in the comments. Uh, yes, I have thought about putting separatrons on the external tank. Of course I have. I used to even in realism overhaul. But people noted it was not realistic. And so I just went with the RCS avoidance maneuver, which is how the shuttle actually does it. And so that is how we're doing it. In real physics, uh, this is all a lot more predictable. <laughs> 
Um, the, the problem here is that unlike the real external tank, we also have a huge weight in the front in order to keep the balance because we don't have the relationship between oxygen and hydrogen keeping the balance with this shuttle. We have a lot of mop propellant in the top that doesn't get used. So when we decouple, uh, even though the decoupling point is very far forward here, uh, it still sort of tilts the external tank in a bad way. So that makes it less than ideal, but, uh, you know, we'll just keep it like this. I don't, I don't think it's gonna hurt the shuttle. Okay, engines off, separation, RCSing. It's not very pronounced because there's not much impulse from the decoupler. We could increase the decoupler impulse. That's one thing we could do. But to be honest, uh, even though I sometimes make a little bit of a deal of it, uh, the RCS maneuver is actually pretty consistent. We can deal with it most of the time. You can sort of see that because we're decoupling from back here, there's more weight up here, and so it tilts like this is the only thing. If we decouple, if we had more decoupling force, it would tilt even more, probably. Fine inclination. Actually, uh, we're not quite touching the station's orbit, so we could probably boost up a bit. So it's not really the S1 truss that we wanted, but it's the S1 truss that we got, so we're going with it. Oh, it's behind us, though. We need to get into a higher orbit. We'll, yeah, we'll get into a higher orbit initially. Okay, we are within lag range of the station. Bob, Dolok, Werbri, and Mervin. Bob, Dolok, Werbri, and Mervin. Don't always highlight the crew of the missions, but we ought to. They're taking a great risk. Okay, that's a good enough approach. I wish I knew how many parts the station was right now, but there's no way to check that. We don't have the little thing in the map view that tells us the, the target has this many parts or we have this many parts. I mean, practically the only time where that's handy is assessing lag and since we currently have a lot of it. That part count thing has increased importance. Okay, station in sight. For once, we seem to be rendezvousing in daylight. Okay, we are approaching the station and preparing to retro. Once again, I lament the little icon in the way of the view. <laughs> We'd have a nice look at the station from here, if not for that. Okay, we have parked. I'm gonna turn off RCS here, and we are going to try and get the payload out. Let me save. Wings do seem to be attached, otherwise one would be floating off by now. Okay, well, it doesn't matter too much which way around we go with this. I guess we'll make this part outboard and this part inboard. Okay, we are nearing the station and we're basically oriented with four being forward here. So the starboard side is to our right. I don't know if it's a good idea to go into settings and try and change the... The tolerance distance for docking is 50%. That was what I was supposed to change, right? Scale how far docking ports can be from each other to finalize docking. I've put it as low as possible already. <laughs> I've put it as low as possible already. Let me check this. So all this time I've had it as low as it could be put. The docking acquiring force on this is 0%. I've had that from the beginning basically. Yeah, when I set up the save, I set, set it to hard difficulty and then did a few custom things. 
so that's why the docking force was automatically set to the bottom. How much do crafts slam together if the docking force setting is higher? Maybe that's why everybody has trouble docking. Yeah, so far I've been putting out these videos in this series every day, but I'll tell you, as all this takes a lot longer to do with the lag, that's probably going to need to stop. <laughs> I'm probably gonna need a little bit more time to do these. Okay, we can see the target port, I think, right there. And yeah, the docking acquiring force on there is 0%, folks, so... We'll see how it all docks when it's 0%, 0%, and the setting in the, in the settings is as low as possible. Now we do have a desired roll here, because uh, this docking port has to face, face aft for the eventual possible docking of the radiator panels, if we get to that. I am turning off SAS when using RCS, but I won't be doing that for the final bit. Again, it's uh, nice how stable it is without SAS on, because I guess I put the RCS in the right place. SAS wiggles with it a lot more and fires the RCS a lot more. This isn't exactly the way I want it. We were a little bit askew, but maybe that'll be a good test of the docking force. And the way the target and velocity vectors behave right close to the end is a little bit weird. Okay, so that was 0% as low as possible. There you have it. <laughs> uh, still pretty forgiving. Alright, uh, well we docked it the way I wanted to dock it, so that is how it is. Let us proceed with bringing the shuttle back. How is the shuttle? Let us do a pitch test. The pitch test, if one of the wings is off, we will definitely see it. And no, it isn't. So we'll try and get to a low orbit. Keeping an eye on the station so that we don't crash into it or anything. So I do recommend turning the docking acquiring force to zero and putting that setting in the settings to like 50%. It's possible that if you're having trouble docking, it's because your craft are actually smashing into each other or something. Okay, on the next orbit we'll see how far off we are from the KSC and sort of adjust our orbit accordingly. We're in a orbit that I think is divisible by uh, into six hours, so... That's why we are in the orbit we are right now, slightly above 100 kilometers. It looks like we'll be passing directly over the KSC or close enough. It looks like we're a little bit late, so we'll get into somewhat of a lower orbit. Okay, I think we're gonna be trying to come down on this orbit. Our periapsis should be in the right location, but I'll double check with my trusty protractor. We are at 100 kilometer periapsis, so that's not a problem. Oh, that periapsis is moving all over the place as we turn. Uh, let's kill that. All right. Yeah, that's about 135 degree angle to the KSC at periapsis, so. We will start this retro at periapsis for consistency and we are going to go to 24.5 kilometers maybe? Um, last time was 25. I'll just try 24 for simplicity's sake. Right here we'll reassess our inclination. Yeah, we're too far north so I'm gonna have it go south. Tilt our orbit a bit. Okay, I think that's all we can do and still have time to turn back here before we hit the atmosphere. So that's how it looks. We'll probably still end up a little bit north. Which means we'll be coming in on the hillside of the KSC. 
No, we're a little bit late in getting that impact point, so I'll pitch up. And we are certainly north, so I'll try and turn. Well, that's how we look right now. Maybe I should even use the engines to tilt our orbit right now. Make us lighter. Remember, if you're heavier, you'll tend to go long because the atmosphere has more trouble slowing you down. And again, having the engines on seems to be keeping our impact point really far. So that's not helping. Having our orientation like this doesn't seem to affect our orbit very much at all, or our descent. We don't seem to be turning to the KSC perceptibly. Yeah, we're not getting there this time. It'd be a lot easier, of course, if I had put the station in equatorial orbit. We all have had experience with that in KSP-1. It's this inclined orbit that makes things a little bit trickier. I haven't done any additional testing for re-entry and landing with the shuttle in between videos for the ISS missions. I'm gonna try as hard as I can here. Oh, oh, I think aerodynamics is forcing us. We can't hold that orientation anymore. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, okay, this is dangerous. Okay, okay, let's not do too much here. Okay, uh, I learned my lesson, sorry, 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 sorry. It's not actually responding to my controls. Oh, I put caps lock on. Oh, no. Okay, uh, yes, I had caps lock on, that's why. Now, let's dump what rests we have. And yeah, we're not getting back there. Let's just try and get it in one piece this time. Uh, it's a little bit sad we don't have the drag chute. Overall, this area looks flatter. If I try and turn back and land around here, there's all those hills which makes me think that even this area is a bit bumpy. This island looks nice. Doesn't it? <laughs> I don't know if I can turn around to it though. I think we should try for this island. Oh, it abruptly cut the music when I cut the throttle. That vertical speed indicator is useless again. Oh, okay. Brakes. Oh, 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 um, just keep the hopping to a minimum, please. I like this island. This island is good. Ooh, squeaks. Well, they're all at the beach now. Okay, parking brakes. Right. This island is good, but we're still 32 kilometers, if that indicator is any indication. Uh, 32 kilometers away from the KSC, so that's not great. Even though I tried to lower periapsis this time. Well, we'll keep trying to adjust. But for now, at least they're safe and we landed in one piece. So let's recover vessel and proceed with the next one, which is the truss on the other side, the P1 truss. Okay, our mission is basically identical to that of last time. We have a crew of Halbert, Gusby, Murney, Nerney, is it Nerney? Nerney? And Rosen, I think. The font is a little bit hard to read on some letters, but we are lined up with the station and it is time to go. So, start and skipping countdown and launch. Okay, my wobbly attempt at a roll is complete. Uh, wobbling a little bit to the left there. Alright. We got some bits over there. 
I guess I still have some debris left over from one of the crash landings. Okay, past the speed of sound and I'm a little bit further south on my trajectory than I wanted it to be. And wiggling a lot. Just to be clear, I do have wiggles. It's not like perfectly smooth or anything. Okay, booster set. Uh, something just happened to my map. Something weird just happened. Nothing problematic here. Uh, it looks alright now. But briefly, that's a bug I hadn't seen before. Okay, we are past 1000 meters per second and much more stable now. And we are continuing to correct northward because we went too far south initially. So most players know that it's a good idea to adjust your inclination, do an inclination change higher up away from the gravitating body. That's mainly because you're slower there. And by the same token, it's a lot better to correct your inclination during launch than after you get back to orb get up to orbit. Because you're going slower right now, and so the inclination change cost is less right now. Which is why I'm taking such pains to do it here. Not to mention we've got extra fuel in this stage, but even if it was somewhat tight, it would be beneficial to do it now rather than later. Okay, that's the orbit that I want, so let us proceed with external tank disposal. Okay, I'm gonna try and have SAS hold prograde this time, just to see how that works out for us. Separation, and moving. I think that's alright. Okay, we are within two kilometers of the station, and yep. with the lag, it takes a while to recognize that it's even in 1x time warp, but we are now slowing down. Now I've just made the 40th named save of the series. Okay, moving away from the truss. Okay, the truss is clear of the bay. Station is ready to go. And we will dock with the same docking port as we did last time. And over to the station we go. Okay, we are fairly close to the station now and slowing down. I was sort of hoping it'd be daylight when we got here, but as you can see, the glow of the sun is just starting on the horizon. Well, I really can't see a whole lot right now. I'm actually going to try and approach from the opposite side just to be able to see anything. Okay, we're getting some sunlight here, but the camera with the lag is a little bit rough. I don't know, it basically shows me pointing directly at the target which is that docking port. I've set it as the target. But we're, we're obviously not exactly right. But anyway. The magnetism being what it is, I'm not too worried about that. We do want to get the roll right though. Well, it's a good thing I have a lot of experience with lag. It's interesting, it has no indicator for caps lock mode, the fine controls mode here. But fine controls definitely work. It just doesn't have any indicator the way it did previously in KSP-1. Okay, that docked. Alright. So, let's take a look at our station. Um, the main truss, uh, we already knew that the SEO truss was a little bit tilted. <laughs> it's going to be like that. Uh, otherwise, these I put on pretty well. Considering there's no like roll guidance to figure it out, it's just eyeballing it. But yeah, the main truss is a little bit off. Now, on the right side, it has a ton of RCS on it if we want to move it. On the downside, uh, undocking and trying to straighten that up is really hard with the lag. So, by the way, it's a lot less lag right now than when we are two vessels trying to come together. See, the camera is very nice and all, but 
Maybe if I tried to move it or went with SAS or RCS on, it'd have a lot more lag too. Anyway, so P1 trust delivered. Shuttle uh, integrity test now. It appears like the wings are attached. So SAS on retro. Okay. That looks... That looks pretty close, like we could land from the seaward side. Um, yeah, I think uh, next uh, the next day we can come down. And burn. 23 kilometer periapsis. Uh, maybe it'll be good to nudge it a touch to the north. By the way, a lot less lag now, so there's that. Coming down, there's not much lag. It's only when we have the truss in the bay. Dawn approaches. We're about the correct weight. The little OMS engines prove that as long as we're fairly high up, they could probably work to help us extend our orbit. So we could fall a bit short and still use them. As long as we know we're falling short early enough, they might be able to help. Well, looking pretty good. Sort of keeping 45 degrees instead of 40. Okay, well, still looking all right. I'll go to 40 now. Cruising right along. This vertical in speed indicator is just miscalibrated, it seems. We're just going down much faster than it's indicating there. It's like indicating 5 meters per second when it's more like 50. We are falling a little bit short, I think. So I'm adding some engine thrust. It does sort of push it forward a bit. Not much. It basically can hold it there. We're on the land side of the KSC again. I probably shouldn't have even corrected north the way I did. Forgot the drag shoot again. Not too sure the drag shoot would be reliable or work particularly well, or whether it might just flip us out completely or glitch or something. You never know. I think we should aim to do a U-turn in. Or yeah, I mean we're definitely going a little bit far, so I don't think we're coming straight in. Island runway. No, <laughs> let's not do that. I don't know if this is possible or not. This thing hasn't been great at turning so far. All right, trying for it. Really trying for it. Must remember we can't use chase view. It seems to be oriented wrong with the shuttle. Pretty nominal so far. This thing flies a lot worse than the space shuttle in Realism Overhaul, let me tell you. This is this is rough stuff. The drag with this shuttle is serious. Boy, do I wish we had split rudder brakes. <laughs> oh. I'm not gonna dump fuel, because we're we've got too much energy right now anyway. Even a little bit more energy, and I'm not sure I can make it. I might reconsider that soon, though. Okay, well, yeah, actually, we're losing energy a little bit fast, so I'm lighting them. I think I might have killed too much energy. <laughs> Great. We might miss... we might hit the water. This shuttle has... Way too much flying brick tendency. Did they add a flying brick module to these parts? I'm not bringing my landing gear down until late. I don't know how much drag it adds, but probably something. I don't really know what the stall speed of this is. We always sort of slam into the ground. <laughs> 
Okay, gear down. I think that's about as late as I dare to leave it. Maybe we can at least roll on to the runway. I don't know if I can pull up. <laughs> we don't have enough speed. Uh, I can't pull up faster. That's the best I could do. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, not again. Come on. We don't have enough speed to... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. Come on. <laughs> Eek. Oh, 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 please. Okay, keep rolling. <laughs> keep rolling. <laughs> um... Well, you know. <laughs> well, I appreciate the low friction on these tires. Where's where where do, where do we taxi off anyway? I I don't think we want to taxi off into the VAB. That's not exactly where we want to go. That's the thing. We don't really have a space plane hangar, do we? The VAB serves as both. Okay. Well, I, I think I think we've made it. We've made it to the runway, not exactly the way I wanted to, but we made it. Albert, Gusby, uh, Nerny or Murney? I think it's Nerny, and Razin or Rosen. I think maybe Razin are the first shuttle crew to make it back to the runway in KSP two, as far as I'm concerned. So STS one thirteen. Dash 13, just for extra luck, has made it. So with that, uh, we will check on our, we'll recover this and then we'll check on our station and then we will call it an episode. Yes, everything seems to be well. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.